Hey fellow back air boyers, Nick here. And today we're going to be building the second bow and arrow set in my personal challenge. So here it is. The bow pulls 50 pounds at 28 inches and is made of 1 inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. And the arrows are made of Douglas fir with reinforced self knocks and splicing in the fletching. So here they are. Let's get started. To start off this set, we're going to be building the bow. So for the bow, you're going to need a 1 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. And I went ahead and cut this to 56 inches long. Next thing you want to do is make some measurements. First you want to measure the center, then 3 inches out from center, and then 2 inches out from that, so 5 inches out from center. And then you also want to mark 9 inches in from both ends. That's going to become our CS. So here it is. I'm going to go ahead, flatten it, and then we'll continue from there. Here's the bow flattened. You can see I have a nice taper from the tip to the handle. One thing I didn't mention is that I'm flattening just to the three inch mark. I'm not flattening to the center here. I also used a one inch spacer for so, it's looking good. Now what we're going to do is heat up the ends and then we're going to flatten it out in a flattening jig. Basically the same thing we did for the youth bow and it's the same thing I do on most of my bows now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now here's the seal fresh out of the flattening jig. I'm just going to go ahead and heat up down in this section because we're going to try and smooth this out, give it a nice transition from limb to seal. This will create a nice strong connection. It'll keep this from failing or folding. It'll also make it look nicer. And depending what we do here, we can change certain characteristics of this bow. So what I'm going to do is just start heating up from about up here to around down here, I'm trying to heat up this whole section so that it forms nicely. Here we go. Now that all the creases are gone, you can see it's easily movable now. Just want to take a hot pad or something, and you want to just make sure that this transition is smooth. You want to keep the same taper from here to here. You want it to be nice and smooth. So that means you're going to have to thin out this side by squishing it and you're going to have to thin out this side by squishing it. You want both to blend into each other. Now once it starts to set, that's when you can start doing your shaping. For the type of bow we're doing, we want the whole back of the bow to be one continuous line going in through the sea because we're going to be putting our our recurve or reflex directly into the sea itself. It's not going to start off at the transition here. Alright, so it's starting to set now. It's starting to get cool. So I just keep on shaping this Making sure that, as you can see, the back is one continuous straight line. Alright, now that it's starting to set on me, I'm just going to sight down and make sure that this tip is perpendicular to the rest of the bow. As you can see, now it is. That's all you need to do. So you just need to just keep making sure that everything is lined up. Is every, if everything is lined up here in this step, when we go on to cutting out our shape and putting things together, it will be nice and even, and we won't have any problems. Just that. And here it is. I'm going to go ahead and do it to the other side, and then we'll work on cutting out our shape and finishing our CS. Now that we've flattened both of the seas, what you want to do is just 
draw out the design you want. We're going for a very basic shape. Nice and simple, this is what I like. We're removing a lot of material, so this is going to lighten up the tip, increase your overall performance. So, once you've marked out your, your shape, and you want to make sure you don't cut too far in, especially down here. As you get to around here, you can go past the center point, but I wouldn't go past the center point down here. That'll make this too weak, more likely for it to bend or collapse here. So as long as you leave it somewhat thick, it should be fine. I've gone ahead and I've cut this side out and cleaned it up. I also went ahead with a file and I rounded out the inside. So now what I'm going to do is just heat this up and put this together and then put our reflex in. So here we go. So as you can see, it's all come together. So you just want to squeeze this together. And then you want to start flexing forward. We're doing most of our reflex here at the end, more like a recurve. So you just want to make sure that you squeeze everything together especially down at the bottom here, you want to push it in. That will make it all nice and flush. And then you just sort of squeeze this together until it cools. Now while it's starting to set, and you can go for a little bit more reflex, this bow is going to be closer to a long bow than a recurve. So this isn't going to be too heavily reflexed. You want to make sure that the sia is aligned with the body of the limb so you just want to line that up make sure that it's lined up that way and then just keep on holding it down until it gets this and it gets nice and set all right it looks good. So there it is. Now I'm just going to go ahead, do this to the other side, and we can go on from there. I've gone ahead and finished up both of the seas. Also went ahead and cut knocks about an inch from the end. So you can see this is what they look like now. Now it's time to work on the handle. So I'm just going to heat up between these handle marks and just a little bit into these handle marks. This is where the fades are going to be, where we're going to transition from limb to handle. And this is going to be the handle itself. So I'm just going to heat this up and then kind of squish it together and I'm going to make this handle line up in the center. There we go. Now that the handle is nice and pliable, you just want to squeeze it perpendicular to the limbs. Now you want to get this handle to be about three quarters of an inch to an inch wide or thick. You don't want it to be too wide so the full inch and a quarter of the one inch pipe causes quite a bit of deflection when you shoot the smaller your handle is while still having a nice even curve the more consistent it's going to be even though it's not center shot or cut to center all right so handles looking good i'm just going to all right so you can see the handle is nice and thin make sure that it's even on both sides all right, now we're going to add a little bit of reflex into our bow. I'd say about four inches of reflex total. 
Alright. We need to shape the bottom just a little bit. Okay. And just a little bit up here. Alright, looks good. Nice and even. Now you want to make sure you sight down the bow. And this is your opportunity to align both limbs up through the handle. Got just a little bit of limb twist here. Alright, there's that. So now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of deflex into our limbs.